The danger part of walking with God. This is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. This is the danger side. You could be walking with God. You could be dressed up in all your garments and of praise and you've got the prettiest Bible in the church and and you know what colors to wear with what and your pocketbook matches your shoes and you never step in the church without stockings and your hair is laid you know how they say fried dyed and laid to the side you are together but see there's a scripture in the Bible that says God excuse me man judges the outward appearance that God judges your heart. So if you're sitting in church and you're eyeballing somebody and you see that they're not looking too together or maybe there's something going on in their personal life, you know about it. You have the inside scoop. And you're praising God and speaking in tongues and Oh, glory to Father, and oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, and you really going on and on, and you know your word, and you love the word that's preached over that pulpit, and you head up the women's ministry, or you head up the men's group, and the boys, and uh, the list goes on, and you are a pillar in the church community, but everybody knows about Sister Appleseed's business. Because you are the newscaster. You are the local reporter. Or you found out a little something about the pastor. And even though you love the pastor and you respect and honor the pastor and you give your tithe and mint and rue, you give everything you and you do all you can do and you are just all with it. But you heard a little something, something and you just have to call Sister Poopa up so that you can give her the inside scoop. But your real reason, of course, is so you can pray for your pastor. And you pray for your pastor. But first, you have filled Sister Poopa with a whole bunch of dirt on the pastor that you're praying for. Trust me, God is not fooled. Sister Poopa might be fooled, but God is not. And what you're dealing with is a heart that feeds off of scum. You like the dirt. You like dishing it. You like hearing it. You like passing it around, baby, because gossip is juicy. And you like hearing gossip like folks like watching Blood and Guts and gory horror movies on TV. It's exciting to you. God is not pleased with that. Because when you spread gossip, you also become a person that breaks up friendships. And God says, he that soweth discord, mm, you shall share your place in the lake of fire. So, put it in a little country terms there. So just want to let you know, don't think you can play games and play little Holy Ghost roundups and do all your little line dancing and, and, and praise dancing and cut your little uh, double step when the music goes double time and the choir gets to, to bumping, boy. They bumping the choir, really singing the day, boy. They getting down. And you get down up there with your little two step. But God is looking at your heart. And you know, here's the sad part. When your heart is dirty, it's like a doctor or, or a surgeon walking into a surgical room, getting ready to cut somebody open. And he just got through, just got through now, working on his engine in the car. And he's got all his little black soot. And he just takes a towel and wipes it off. And he just got through blowing his nose because he has a cold. And he getting ready to cut you open and he never washed his hands. 
What do you think that's going to do to you when you have surgery? It's going to set up all kind of infection because bacteria, soot, filth, all kind of messes in there. It's going to make you sick. Well, guess what? It's the same thing with your heart. When you open your mouth and you spew your contaminants all over the body of Christ, you create a virus in the church. And then the devil starts adding insult to injury and he creates an infection. And then everybody that gets involved and gets connected with you gets infected. Now they're contaminated. And you've got a situation that you started. Now, the Lord comes busting through those clouds or he calls your behind home. And when you get ready to go home, you find out there is no address there waiting for you. And you wonder, well, hey, wait a minute now. I laid hand and Sister Susie Q got saved. And Brother Baloney, he went back to his wife. And he got a job. Look what I did. Yeah, you were holy rolling and doing everything else. But God didn't like what he saw in your heart. And he didn't like what you did with what you had in your heart. See, God doesn't play like we do. So when everybody else and the pastor and all the people are happy with you because you serve and you're so faithful and you give real good. Oh, yeah. Guess what happens? God looks at your heart. He looks at your innermost motives. He looks at what makes you, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He looks at what, what rolls you, what moves you, what excites you. You're not getting excited over the word. You're not getting excited over the presence of God. You speak a little tongue here, you do a little sidestep, a little line dancing in church, wear a cross around your neck to advertise for God for, you know, advertise, you know, for the kingdom. That's nice. Carry your Bible around, kind of remind folks who you are. But everybody knows that they want to get the inside scoop. They know they can go to you. God hates that. You may like it and your friends may like it. Or shall I say, your cohorts may like it, but God does not. And no, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven that way. You will not go to be with God because God does not cohabit with that mess either. I remember uh, my husband, my late husband, with his sexy self. <laughs> I miss him so much. My late husband used to use a statement and I agreed with him wholeheartedly when I saw how some women are now you know I'm picking on us ladies too he used to say Pat you know women can be so messy and it's true I don't know what it is about us that you know we're like the the guy on car 54 where are you the old police program some of y'all are too young to know that a little goofy cop and every time he heard something, ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's the way some of us women are when it comes to news. Ooh, ooh, did you hear? Ooh, ooh, boy, I didn't know they did that. Girl, tell me what happened. No, he didn't. Are you serious? Ooh, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. wait. Let me call so-and-so. Oh. And you are just getting off on all this dirt. That turns God off, you guys. And you know what it does? You end up hurting people. Because one thing I have found out, I was told when I was first saved being counseled by my pastor, don't tell everything. Because when you get through telling it, and you're over it and you've forgotten all about it, you got folks in the church who are so offended by what you said, even if it didn't happen to them, that they might not even be able to come back to church because they 
have lost faith in the leadership that you're gossiping about, or they have become grown hateful or contempt. They, they've, they, they've developed a sense of contempt and disrespect for the lady whose business you got through telling, for the sins she committed. They can't get over her sin. You moved on because you used to hearing about them all and you doing your own share of dirt that you ain't telling about. But these other people, sometimes you can cause young Christians to turn a bad eye and they start looking at people funny and then they're walking around telling the spreading the rumors and you end up spreading a, a virus, a sickness throughout the body of Christ. It's like a, it's like a blood disease. A blood disease in the body can affect the organs. It can affect the skin, the bone mass. It can do so much damage. And when you are the, 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 uh, the contaminant or the germ, and you're poisoning the blood system, the blood flow of the body of Christ, and the body of Christ operates on the blood of Jesus. But no, you're contaminating everything. So what you end up doing is not only backsliding and falling away yourself. You grab a whole lot of folks and pull them with you. Like the crabs in a the barrel. Then when it's time for Jesus. And everybody trying to get up out that barrel to go be with the Lord. All of y'all are pulling each other back down with your nasty attitudes, your judgmentalism, your contempt, your disrespect, your gossip, slandering, sowing discord, talking about the pastor behind his back, smiling faces, <laughs> pretending to be friends. But anyway, I'm going to stop there. There's a lot of that that goes on in churches, you guys. So don't think that because you're sitting up in one, that it's clean and healthy and ever so pure. Whatever you do, do your best to shut your mouth. The Bible says be slow to speak and swift to hear. Do your best to shut your mouth, keep it shut, mind your business, and stay out of everybody else's. And don't tell it. If you don't want yours told, you keep your mouth shut. Because if you truly love your brother and sister, truly love, the Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. They don't go out there and put it on the front page. They cover, they pray, they support, they cover. And if you're not covering, baby, you're marching to the wrong music, baby. And I'm afraid for you because you're dancing on thin ice when it comes to God's graces. Don't mess with his people. Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. That does not mean slapping them. No harm and much harm can be done with that lip of yours. Zip it, pray over it, repent. Ask God to clean your heart of all those contaminants. And if you have spread rumors and lies and all kind of mess, you get up in front of that church and you apologize to everybody so that you can help your brothers and sisters who are following your example and help them get their act straight too. Amen? God bless you. It's serious. It's no plaything lives and souls, eternity is at stake.